So I'm standing here in like denial that they don't have any guides here. Really? Part of the Red Dragon's Zord. I was missing the head. Let me know in the comments below if you would pick it up for $2.99 in this condition. I'm probably not going to. It's Ask Alicia. Yeah, exactly. Where's the tub? You know what it is, though, right? No. It's the Red Dragon Zord. Once Power Ranger started going bad, but it is missing its fucking head. Two ninety nine. I don't think I could reasonably buy that. Sight beyond sight. Up. I feel like Sam always told me to look out for these. I'm gonna pick it up. This game is terrible. Oh, I'm at Armageddon. Oh, uh, the Scrolls for Oblivion. That's pretty cool. Legitimately a guy that I already picked up. I feel like I have that too. I hated this game. Legitimately hated Street Fighter 4. Yeah. This stuff. I'm about that. Really? All right, the purchase could have been a little bit better there. Um, you kind of roll the dice with certain thrift store employees because you never know if they're going to price a strategy guide as a book or a magazine. If it's a magazine, it's a dollar. If it's a book, usually it's going to be three forty-nine, which really kind of sucks. And that's what I got today. That is surprising.
You always check to make sure it's in there, right? That's why I do this. A week after it comes out for at least half the price. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 for the Switch. That's awesome. I can't wait to play this. I've actually wanted to play the first Dragon Ball Xenoverse game, but to be honest, I just don't sit in front of my TV and play games enough. So it, um, it being on the Switch is amazing. Getting it this early. And for at least half price, I can't complain about that at all. Unfortunately, I don't think these are actually going to be worth that, but we'll check them out. They all are in there, which is a rarity with DS games in a thrift store. Boomer Brazil commercials don't get caught up in the crossfire. Oh my god, this thing is flimsy. Uh, back on all my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, VHS tapes, like straight off the TV, always had crossfire commercials. I wish these were in much better shape. Let's see what else we have though. The Ratchety Game Informer. Some EGMs. Oh, Game Pro. Oh, that's in rough shape. Two thousand three. Oh, it's on the ground. Current day Game Informers, official PS Magazine. EGM, The Watchman. Oh, I had this one. That's cool. It's another one, it's in bad shape. All right, had that one too. Get it. Hey guys, that's not how I start a video usually, but let's take a look at what I was able to find on this thrifting in Connecticut that took place over the course of like the last month or so. To be honest, it's been a while since I've been thrifting, and I don't know what order I found this stuff in. So we're just gonna rifle through it, have it in a stack. Let's just get into it. For what I could only assume was 99 cents, picked up a Pokemon Emerald guide. Uh, cover, they tried to do like some kind of glossy, like, shininess and unfortunately it's kind of peeling on this uh not in the best shape uh this is a pricing gun that I should probably open up and take a look at i don't believe it has everything it needs because i think you need the um well, something more than i thought it did it has Apparently, the ink. I don't know if that's still okay. But, 
basically just a pricing gun. Uh, back when I used to hang out with Sam at the flea market booth, he had a gun like this. And he'd use this to price his games. And he told me if I ever saw one, pick it up. Because they're worth like $40. And this one I think is about $30 to $40. Uh, I don't know if this is everything it needs. I don't know how it operates. Like, as you saw, I just opened it for the first time. I've had this in my possession for like a month now. Uh, gonna keep that all together. Might hold on to it. Might resell it. Who knows? It would be an easy 30 something dollars back. And I only spent $3 on it. And I don't know exactly what I would need it for. Like, even if we do price pri pricing at our garage sales, it's not something that would really be that necessary. Picked up this toy at our Savers, because not often you see old Power Ranger toys. Unfortunately, this is missing the head. This is the Red Dragon Zord from when Mighty Morphin started going down the shitter. Picked up some old EGM magazines for, I think, a dollar each. These are ones I had as a kid. You got the Star Wars Rogue Squadron one. And one for Tomb Raider. And it's one of the cooler picture or one of the cooler covers for Tomb Raider because if you look closely, the art is all made up of screenshots from the game. I remember seeing that as a kid when I got this in the mail and thought it was fucking awesome. Uh, this one I ended up picking up for Rob Mitchell, the video game hoarder. <laughs> Dora the Explorer. Barnyard Buddies. As it looks like she's kind of hitting that sheep from the back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he didn't have it. He was going for a complete PS1 collection. Highly suggest you check out his channel. Uh, a few of these games I picked up because, well, I wanted them for my collection. Fossil Fighters, kind of a Pokemon clone of some sort. Still has some value, about $10. Only paid $4 for it. Scribble Knots Unlimited. Figured for $4, I'll give it a try. I think I've had it in the past, or one of the DS games. Um, picked up a copy of Super Princess Peach for $8. Game still goes for at least $20. So I figure I'll resell that since I do have it in my collection. I'll save my most exciting pickup for last, I guess. We got some guides. Uh, this one. Fucking Sight Beyond Sight. Eagle Eye Vision. Saw this in some kids' books. Saw the Legend of Zelda. Saw Legend of Z, I think, what I saw originally. And I decided to pick it up just because... I, I, I honestly don't know why I decided to pick it up. I felt like because I was able to spot it from afar... That I needed to pick it up. Truthfully, I think I have like three different guides for Twilight Princess. A Zelda game I have no intention of playing. Yeah, I do actually. I'm looking at it right now. I have <laughs> the hardcover one. The collector's edition one. The premiere edition one. And now this one. So I have three different fucking guides for a game I don't have any inclination of ever playing. Picked up a guide for Oblivion, Elder Scrolls IV. Unfortunately, this was one that I probably shouldn't have picked up. Uh, like I said, I believe I said earlier in the video, some savers will price things as magazines, some will price them as books as they should. This one, unfortunately, was priced as a book. So, $3.50, not exactly a great deal for a guide. Uh, one of the cooler books I found... The official Nintendo Player's Guide. This one was priced at $2, so I was happy to pick it up. Has some strategy for some really old Nintendo games like Rad Racer, Russian Attack, uh, Top Gun. Really cool to have. I had this, I got this from Ted in much better condition, and I think I ended up trading it away or selling it. I believe I traded it. The last guide I have to show you is another one that I probably shouldn't have bought because, like, why do I need all these Pokemon guides? I can basically play a Pokemon gu uh, game blind at this point. I don't really need a guide for anything. Uh, but Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And the last thing I found is actually one of the most expensive things I've ever purchased at a thrift store. But I felt obligated to purchase it because I've been interested in the series 
And to be honest, before I saw it at the thrift store, I didn't know it was on the Nintendo Switch. That's right, a goddamn Switch game at the thrift store. Given it wasn't that great of a price, but I was able to pick up Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 for the Nintendo Switch for $25. And given, like I said, this was all picked up about a month ago, at the time, this had just come out a few days ago, so it was a really good deal, because it's a $50 game, brand new at the store, half off at the thrift store, game I want to try for the Switch. If I don't like it, resell it, whatever. But let me know what you've been able to find at your thrift stores lately. Let me know how often you'd like to see these thrifting videos. I don't really hit up the thrift stores as often as I should or as often as I'd like to. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Thrifting in Connecticut. Please like the video, subscribe if you're new. I'd really appreciate it if you go check me out on Patreon. Big shout out to Totterbert. Continued support. My undying love. And as always, keep it real, Internet. I love you guys.